Hello Vintage Computing fans. I have a lovely trio of loveliness for you to look at today. These Intergraph Professional Graphics cards from around 1997 to 1998. Let's have a look at the first one. This model is the Intergraph MSMT 440. It was better known as the Realism 2. Um, which was the um, successor to the Realism uh, range of graphics cards that came out in about 1996 in the uh, TDZ series uh, Intergraph workstations. These were um, very advanced cards at the time. Um, it was when in the era where manufacturers like Intergraph were trying to make Windows NT workstations to compete with silicon graphics. Let's have a look at this card in more detail. Let's get a bit closer to it. They're really fine looking cards. We'll talk about the performance of the cards and this is just an intro introduction to the review and I'm going to install them in my Pentium Pro system and run them through some tests and uh, show them working. So. As I said, this is the um, I forget the uh, the name the MSMT 440. We've got a lovely big uh, IBM palette deck there, lovely blue IBM palette deck. Got a digital chip here, which is probably some sort of PCI interface. We've got the Sirius Logic chip, um, the GD5440, which is used on all three of these cards um, to give um, DOS functionality. An LSI chip there, maybe some sort of memory controller, and we've got some some A6 under these heat hints, heat sinks, um, you know, custom chips made by Intergraph. Um, no idea uh, what they do. Um, rasterization, um, probably a geometry engine there for triangle setup. Um, not a lot of information available on these, so uh, now that there wasn't a lot of information available at the time, but it's really hard to dig stuff out there. That daughter board there, that's a memory upgrade, texture memory upgrade. I think it's a 16 meg upgrade, so there's about 16 meg frame buffer memory and so 16 meg uh, texture memory, memory on this card, so 32 in total. And that big connector there, which you can see on all the cards, that's to connect to an optional uh, geometry card which would have run in an adjacent PCI slot or AGP slot. There were various varieties of these uh, later ones um, had a, a number of geometry engines integrated onto one chip and but earlier ones had loads of chips you know full length cards with probably about um, 20 A6 on them, a um, bit like the uh, the SGI um, Reality Engine machines. Um, you know, multiple chips to um, which was the thing at the time until um, we started integrating um, more and more. So we ended up with a GPU, the single chip. So all these cards are on the PCI bus, which is one of the things that interests me about them because. Enables you to fit them to you know older systems like the Pentium Pro I'm going to be using, which is good because it shows the true performance of the card because there isn't a fast CPU there to um, you know to help with the, the triangle setup. Um, it sort of shows the performance of, of the card. Uh, next one is the MSMT495. Now these, I'd say all these cards you could regard as realism too. Um, they all came out slightly um, later than the other but they're all around the 97-98 um, time period. They're all slight improvements on on one another but they're all sort of the same architecture so we regard them all as uh, realism too. Often sold under the in Intense 3D brand and this, this first one here, the MSM T440 it was like a consumer version of the card in the um, TDZ workstation. So I think it was the Z13 was the card in the 
um, in the workstations that you couldn't buy uh, independently and these were like um, consumer cards that manufacturers could integrate into their own systems or you could buy them um, you know to put into your own machine so we've got the 495 uh, very similar uses a serious logic chip um, just um, more integration so we've just got two A6 now under these uh, heat sinks so I would say it's probably got two pipelines uh, so um, we've probably got an integrated triangle setup and um, rasterization uh, chip um, and texturing um, units all in the same unit probably probably I don't know can't say for sure probably two pipelines and we've got a few interface chips there for PCI bus this car's got 32 meg of memory on board uh, no uh, facility to expand the memory but we've got again we've got the, uh, the geometry uh, expansion uh, connector there and this one at the top is the MSMT623 larger heat sinks on this one very similar to the 495 but I'd say it was a similar card with a few tweaks maybe um, you know maybe a smaller process for the um, for the processors running at higher clock speed so this one has you know it's the best performer because it was the latest revision of the cards um, but we can regard them all as th from the same family um, just a word on performance these cards are of interest to me because in 1996 John Carmack had uh, had released Quake and they were working on the GL Quake um, port of the game and I think John Carmack had uh, in Intergraph um, Z13 workstation so using the Z13 card so it will have been the the, the, um, the realism the, the older version of this because these are the these are all realism to generation and he uh, he um, he made a few comments about performance because he was running on NC workstations also on SGI machines as well um, you know producing the um, the OpenGL port and discussing performance and this was before the 3DFX Voodoo had been released and I think the rendition Verite, the, the V1000 3D Blaster had been released so that was available and they had that running um, I think that could go up to about 512 by 368 resolution and you probably double your performance um, over using just the CPU and get better image quality um, so he, he was looking forward to the release of the 3DFX and he was talking about the fill rate. It had a 50 million pixels or texels per per second um, fill rate and that is the key. Re that was the key really for uh, performance, for gaming performance for 3D cards. And that's where these cards um, fall behind when workstation cards get criticised for not working well with games. Well, variety of reasons for that but one is the fill rate is lower because the cards work in a slightly different way they're designed to offer a lot more features you know overlay planes and things like that um, you know more than a, a gaming card that's just pr pr produced for pure performance so to put things in perspective I think the original realism had about 33 um, 33 to 38 um, megapixels second fill rate this one's probably got I'd say maybe 50 55 so similar to the voodoo and these two slightly higher performance so maybe getting up to 60 with the 495 maybe about 65 with the 623 so we'll run quake on them and see what you know see what happens uh, bear in mind that I think my memory was interleaved on the uh, on the Voodoo, so I think in Quake, GL Quake, uh, it needs two passes for the textures, one one for the textures and one for a light map on the pixels. So we might get realistically about 30 um, megapixel fill rate on on the fastest card. Probably give us maybe 20, 25 frames per second, 640 by 480 resolution. 
have to see when we get these up in the machine and running. Sorry to ramble on, but there's just so much to sort of fit in. Uh, so much to, well, so little to say and so much to say about these cars because little is known about them. But they have the, for me, they have a very fond place in um, in my memory because it was such an exciting time when Quake came out and we were looking forward to hardware accelerated 3D graphics and there weren't many consumer versions available there were these professional cards which were you know three thousand pounds three thousand dollars something like that so out of reach of me at the time um, and looking forward to these cheaper you know consumer grade cards but these are the things I really wanted playing around with 3D modeling software at the time and with games you know the first 3D games coming out it was just such an exciting time you know it was the time for me so um, these cards have um, an interest to me mainly sort of linked in with, with Quake really anyway enough of that let's um, I'll get the system set up and get the first card in it on it and um, we'll run them all and see if they perform and see if there's any sort of big differences in, in performance between the different generations of card it'll be interesting to see okay see you in a bit